What's going on everybody? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and welcome back to the channel. Well, first off, I wanted to say I took your comments on my last video to heart, mainly that I shouldn't be commenting about a game before I've actually tried it out for myself. Point made, this footage you see is now me playing the actual game on my PC and as expected, it performed pretty poorly. Now for context, I have a Threadripper Pro 3975WX CPU. I know it's not the fastest gaming CPU, but it is more than strong enough to handle even the most intensive AAA games. I also have a 3090 Founders Edition GPU and 256 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Altogether, my entire setup with all the ancillaries easily touches into the five-figure range, so it's not one of these odd combos Respawn and EA mentioned in their last tweet. Or so we thought it was their last tweet because we just got some breaking news from Respawn concerning incoming fixes and patches for Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So let's dive right into this update tweet from Electronic Arts Respawn and Lucasfilm Games. It starts off, it says, Today you'll notice a patch has become available for the PC version of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And tomorrow, May the 2nd, so that's Tuesday, we'll also be issuing a patch for both PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Now, I read a lot of your comments on my last video stating that, hey, I'm playing on PS5, I'm over on Xbox Series X or S. Game runs just fine for me. Now, if you haven't seen the Digital Foundry breakdown of the PS5 version, I'll include a link to that full breakdown and test they did uh, for that console version of the game. And in reality, no, the game was not running anywhere up to snuff. It was just simply downscaling the resolution so that it could actually hold somewhat close to the frames you were asking it to hold. As a case in point across all the different versions, PC, PlayStation 5, and over onto the Xbox, this entire game has not been optimized correctly. And I guess that's what they're trying to remedy here. So they say today, May the 1st, PC patch, performance improvements for non ray traced rendering. I was actually playing it this morning. It was horrendous. I was getting massive stutters, frame rates just all over the place from the upper 90s to the low 20s and huge stutters anytime I would enter into a new zone or a cut zone, uh, cut scene would start and they say for non ray traced rendering. So it became available while I was playing and recording the first part of the game. I went back in after I downloaded this three plus gig patch. I re-recorded it. This is the actual footage you see. Now tomorrow, 5-2, that's Tuesday, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S get their updates. By the way, it's already up there for PC, so that's what you see me playing. It says, multiple crashes fixed across PlayStation and Xbox Series X and S for various areas of the game. Fixed crashes that were tied to skipping cinematics, performance improvements across PS5 and Xbox Series XS, fixed an issue with dynamic cloth inside the Mantis, fixed various rendering issues, fixed an issue with registered Neko colors not saving, fixed an issue with registered Neko disappearing from the table, fixed issues with cinematic dialogue overlapping, that was a big issue, fixed various collision issues, fixed an issue with enemy AI remaining in T-pose during photo mode, fixed a freeze that occasionally occurred while talking to Doma, fixed a bug where the BD Oil VXX did not properly render, fixed an issue where players were getting stuck inside the chamber of duality if you didn't save after leaving the chamber and die. The PC version of the game has already received the fixes coming to console on 5.2. Like I said, this footage you see is on the latest, latest, latest patch that they just put out. We are hard at work on patches that will further improve performance and fix bugs across all platforms. So I immediately went in, like I said, and re-recorded the entire first part of this game. And what you see now is that updated gameplay on epic settings with ray tracing turned off. Now, gameplay FPS is better, but it's still fluctuating all over the place. And although I'm not seeing the dramatic into the 20 FPS range gameplay like I was this morning, it's still not really stable. Furthermore, I again experienced a cutscene where part of the dialogue was just not happening. The background music was there. I saw lips moving, but no dialogue. 
overall, I, I guess it's improved. Although I do stand by my statement of EA and how this is par for the course for them. They should have never released this game in the state and at an elevated price tag of 70 bucks. But I guess some good news incoming for console players in this tweet. Again, for me on PC, it is better. But as I said, I'm getting wild FPS swings. You still get those heavy stutters when entering new zones or transitioning to cutscenes. And I really wish there was some option that I could just lock the frame rate in, which would make my recordings even more stable. As always, leave me your feedback concerning Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive my latest upload notifications. If you could take a few seconds more to rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. Remember, you can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and of course, in my open community Discord server. Links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Shout out to the over 119,000 of you that have taken the leap and hit subscribe. And as always, a huge thanks goes out to my patrons over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. Looking forward to this game operating correctly. Signing off.